Hi there, my name is Angie and I am a chemist who loves makeup. And today I am going to give my input on the Tati vitamin controversy as a chemist and what I think about the safety and claims of her product. There's been a lot of scrutiny about the safety of the ingredients, particularly the saw palmetto. And a lot of people took to WebMD, which pretty much said you probably shouldn't use this if you're a pregnant woman or you're nursing. And Jen Loves Reviews posted a link about saw palmetto that is from the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health. So this is a government run website. So I take this as a very legit source. Whereas WebMD is sometimes like questionable. Basically this website says we don't know a lot about it as a dietary supplement, says it's tolerated by most users, and it's not known to interact with medications. But the information on the safety of this comes primarily from studies involving men. So little is known about the safety or side effects of supplemental in women, so I still feel like I'm out on that. I didn't really like that she was criticizing people for going on Google and WebMD. This was just put out there and people had to make a very quick decision. She, maybe she should have thought about not putting it in there. I don't know if the benefits of it outweigh the negative publicity of it. And I just don't know much about it. And as for her hyping up the facility that manufactures her supplements as meeting FDA standards, FDA standards aren't a suggestion or something that you should aim to. That's the law, like that's the standard that you need to meet to manufacture here. The FDA is an agency that was set in place to protect people and they set the standard. So I'm not sure what she means when she said not all facilities do this. I am curious if she looked outside of the US to produce, it's not something special to meet FDA standards. And the quality testing that she goes on to describe is very standard. At the least, you need to at least do identification testing on the raw materials for your product that come in. Because if you don't, they could be misbranded, they could be something that isn't what they say they are, and it could hurt people. There's been at least one incident in where something in pet food was misbranded or adulterated, which just means that it's not what it says it is, and it killed pets. So at the very least, that is definitely necessary. Then that is standard. And then she talks about testing for potency. This also kind of goes into identification because if you can prove that something has a certain amount of something, that means that has not been adulterated. And you are gonna do heavy metals testing and microbial testing. And testing different points of the batch is also very common. This is also very standard. This isn't something that only her facility or a few facilities do. This is very, very standard. And they also undergo the same testing. And then now we're gonna move on to her claims. So as for her claims, this has no preservatives. I would assume that this would make you think that your other supplements would have preservatives, but you don't need preservatives if there's not an environment in which bacteria can grow, which is usually a wet environment. Since it's a dry product and doesn't have an inhabitable environment for bacteria, you don't need this. And she also says there's no parabens. Now, if you don't need a preservative, you're definitely not gonna have parabens because you don't need a preservative. So I just don't really like the way that it's marketed. It makes it seem as if other supplements have these things and they, when they do the micro testing, they can prove that it doesn't need any preservatives. I think it's misleading to think that your supplement is unique in that it doesn't have preservatives if it doesn't need them. And her claims of being gluten-free, soy-free, and vegan, I think that these are the important things to focus on. A lot of times, like vegan, you'll have gelatin, which is obviously not vegan, gluten-free, anything from wheat, soy-free, you know, people could have allergies or intolerance to these things. And this kind of also plays into the cost. It's also what's gonna drag your costs up. So when she says she cannot get this FDA approved, she's not lying. You cannot do that for a dietary supplement. It is not curing anything. It's not gonna change the chemistry of the body because that would make it a drug. So she can only talk about how it can improve the appearance, that kind of stuff. And even if she could, it would be very, very expensive to do so. It takes a lot more clinical trials than the amount that she's done. And that's why name brand medicine costs so much more because they have to make back their money from all these clinical studies they've done. And then once their patent goes out, that's when the people can make it generically for a lot cheaper. The dietary supplement industry is trying to become more validated, more so like drugs would be, but obviously since the FDA doesn't do that, they go and they seek certification or verification. There are some agencies that do that, like the USP and the NSF, and these certifications cost a lot. 
because you have to get them to audit your facility. They have to come back every so often. There's just a lot of things that go into that, so that makes them more expensive, and that's why we see a lot of bigger brands like Nature Made that gets those kind of verifications because they can afford to do so. And as for her studies, I don't know what she can legally share with us, but I really feel like I needed a lot more information. I wanna know how many people were in the study. I wanna know how smooth this and moisture was measured because she listed those as two things that improved. Basically want as much info as I can get so I can draw my own conclusions from the results they got instead of just being told this is what my results mean. And I thought it was really interesting that she showed the 23 year old skin and she says imagine what I could do for a 30 year old, a 40 year old, a 50 year old. If That's why I'm wondering what the age range was of people she had in her study because I would assume she would have a variety and not just all 23 year olds. So I would really think it would be useful if she would provide what happened to a 30 year old skin or a 40 year old skin. I would have loved for her to bring on the, a scientist on her team, a doctor on her team to explain the health benefits, to explain these kind of safety things. And I think this is something she should have done from the get go. Now, I think it's too late for that to happen. She does speak about they don't wanna go on camera. I totally understand that now because at this point, it's to answer backlash and not to provide you know, information to get ahead of this. I will give to her that this is far cheaper than a lot of the phytoceramide supplements out there. I did some digging that also contain phytoceramides were more than hers for a 30 day supply, so I will give her that, but at this point, I would not purchase it. Her skin and her husband's skin alone, I need to see before and after pictures of real reviews. Any of these nutrients that you're receiving in excess to your body, you're not gonna absorb and you're just gonna pee out. I need a lot more evidence if I'm gonna purchase something that is more than my gym bill every month. And I know a lot of people have been saying people are being way too critical of her, that people don't normally look this deep into vitamins, but the thing is this has a lot of ingredients, especially that ceramide ingredient that drives up the price a lot. And I think it's good that people are critical, think that people should be critical of the other supplements they buy too. I think most people probably weren't looking for a phytoceramide supplement. This was just kind of something she brought out and said how great it was and brought these clinical studies as opposed to the typical like $12 hair, nail, skin vitamins, which are obviously significantly less for a greater amount of time. I don't feel like the results that I would get would be enough for me to want to buy it. I could be proven wrong. That's my two cents about this. I would not buy this product because I don't have enough evidence to show me that this is gonna change my life. That's where I stand with it. I hope that you found this video informational and if you liked it, please don't forget to click the subscribe button so you could see more of my videos. I do a lot of makeup reviews that are ingredient focused and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!